Good afternoon, everyone, and it is a warm welcome to all of you that have joined us here today at the Nissan Arena in Brisbane, Queensland, and those watching this telecast today live and free on Fox Sports and KO Sports as we present you the press conference ahead of Friday night's blockbuster heavyweight contest here in Queensland between Justice Hooney and Toa Kiki Lutelli. My name is Steve Payos. Looking forward to talking to everybody involved in this huge promotion on Friday night. A little bit of details regarding the promotion. It is Friday night, the 4th of November. It kicks off here in Brisbane, Australian Eastern Standard Time at 6 p.m. and that is 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time for the southeastern states of Australia big, big night of boxing. We're joined by so many of the undercard here, as well as our main event fighters, teams from the main event, as well as our promoter, Dean Lonigan. It's all brought to you by the wonderful people at Oxmar Properties, as well as Palmerbet, Bloke in a Bar, and Red Rooster. Promises to be a huge night, as well as the main event. We have some of the undercard here as well with us, Ankush Huda and Ben Bomber, who will be fighting it out over six three-minute rounds at Super Welterweight. We also have Clay Waterman ahead of his light heavyweight contest against Mitchell Whitelaw. That promises to be a great fight. Faris Chevalier back on a DNL boxing show again after a great fight last time out. He fights for some regional belts and he comes up against the very promising Jerome Pampalone from New Zealand. We also have Ben Horn. He's going to have a fantastic fight against the promising Campbell Somerville. And then we move on to our main event of the evening. It is, of course, the undefeated Justice Hooney who's coming up against Toa Kiki Lutelli. Joining them as well, we can see up on stage the respective coaches of each fighter. Rocky Hooney is up on stage as well as Isaac Peach. Pleasure to have them with us. As well as Michael Francis, manager of Justice Hooney as well. Without any further ado, I'd like to kick this off by talking to the man who's bringing you all the action on Friday night. That is our promoter. It is Mr. Dean Lonigan from D and Dell Boxing. Dean, a very warm welcome to you. First of all, let's talk about the main event and what you're expecting from that fight. We've heard some comments for you about about the whinging that's been going on, the fact that it's been difficult to get opponents for justice, and now we've got a chance in a very juicy heavyweight contest. Will Kiki Latelli bring a challenge for justice, or will the steam train go on, Dean? Oh, look, I think it'll be a sensational fight for justice. There's no doubt that Kiki is incredibly durable. He's now had um, 11 fights. He's had eight wins, two draws, and one loss. Has never been stopped. And uh, you know, Rocky and Mick and myself were talking uh, quite some time ago that this is a perfect development fight for Justice to go out and try out the new skills that he's doing and learning up in um, uh, Los Angeles where he's training with Justin Fortune and of course the reason why he's going up there is to get the best possible sparring that Justice can get so he can come back, learn the new skills and, and implement them against guys that are incredibly durable. But uh, I'm looking forward to this fight for a whole other reason. We were supposed to have this fight, the main event, uh, probably six or eight months ago and I've had nothing but whinging and whining coming from Team Peach who was the, uh, the team coach of um, Kiki Latara, and I, I got to tell you, I got a lot of time for uh, Kiki, he's a good man, I got a lot of time for Isaac, but the amount of whinging that comes out, oh, we beat Dempsey McKean and the Australian judges are corrupt, oh, we can't come over a pr pr promotional event because, oh, it's going to disrupt our training, oh, you keep putting us off and you treat us like shit, oh, Justice Hooney gets all the attention, Justice gets all the attention because Justice can fight. Justice gets all the attention because he was once upon a time a world amateur champion and uh, he did something uh, incredible on debut uh, coming out the first man in 100 or 110 years in Australian boxing to come out of the amateur ranks into a 10 round fight and win the national title. Never been done before. Justice Hooney is something absolutely special. I think Kiki Latelli is someone who will present an excellent fight on Friday night. He's going to come, they're going to throw punches, but for God's sake, I hope the whinging stops afterwards. And, uh, you know, we'd like to see, and I've said to Justice and I've said to Rocky on a regular occasions, I'm not too concerned if you knock guys out or don't. The best guys in the world right now are boxers. If you have a look at the heavyweight division, Alexander Ursek uh, is a great boxer. He doesn't knock out too many guys. You've got uh, Tyson Fury is an excellent boxer. And our very own Jaya Bataille just went 12 rounds with Maris Breeders, both of which are excellent boxers, not known punches. It doesn't come down to whether you knock guys out or not, it's whether you entertain and you do a great job along the way and most importantly win. And something that Justice Hooney does is win. He doesn't do have any whinging along the way, which I like to say about my counterparts over here because that's all I've been hearing. And you, instead of being Plumber Peach, which is what Sir Isaac's name is back at home, maybe you should be Isaac the Whinging Pom Peach because that's all we're hearing.
He can fight that right kick, Latelli, though, Dean. This will he be a fight. test for justice, so there's no doubt about the actual challenge that will present itself for justice. He can, fight, he can really fight. He's really tough. He's very durable. He had a good amateur career. He had about 60 fights in the amateurs. He won the New Zealand Golden Gloves, won the New Zealand National title as an amateur. And if you want to have a look at how guys are going to go in their professional career, have a look at how they went in the amateurs. You know, the two of the best boxers, in my opinion, in Australia right now are Justice Hooney, who's sitting on my right, who had the most stellar amateur career probably of any heavyweight boxer uh, in Australasia, and Jaya Bataya, who had an amazing career as, a, um, you know, as an amateur. You, down here you've got Campbell Somerville, who had an incredible career as an amateur, and that's what we look to, um, and, and it's very important. So uh, it's fair to say that we've got some of the best boxers on the planet, and they're going to be doing good things. Thank you very much for that, Dean. We'll be coming back to you a little bit later on. But Isaac, would you quickly like to jump in there and respond to those comments about the whinging that's been going on and the fact that you know it's been so hard to put this together? You are here now, which is a positive. Yeah, look, um, I thought you were better than that, Dean. Um, the truth is, Dean's been begging me to win because no one cared about the fight. So the truth is, is he's, can you say something? Can you do this? Can you do this? We're not saying anything else. Um, we're not whingers, man. All the best to uh, the honeys and for the fight, man. Um, we just had a fight now. Um, Wait till he gets behind the doors. It changes. He's an angry man. Dean's trying really hard. Um, look, that, that's the truth is he tries to put words in everyone's mouth. We're here to fight. We're here to take an opportunity. It's a great opportunity for us. We're big underdogs. We've done our best. Kiki's trained really, really hard and um, made the best man win. Thanks very much, Isaac. That's what a good promoter does, though, right, Dean Lonergan? Does promote the fight, which is the very important thing. We'll come back to our main event shortly, but let's talk to some of our undercard first and foremost. I'd like to start with Ankush Huda. Ankush, a very warm welcome to you. Uh, six three-minute rounds at Super Welterweight is where you will be boxing on Friday night. You've had some big fights this year uh, on the world stage, a state title win as well. Does that give you an edge coming into this fight, knowing that you've been on the biggest stage recently? Definitely gives me an edge. I'm ready. I've been training hard and I've got a lot of experience. Like I come from India, so people don't know that I'm so experienced, but I've had a lot of fights. And talking about amateur career, Dean just said, How many fight, amateur fights have you had? Bomb or six? And he talks shit like you've had 100 fights. So he's saying that's going to knock me out. I'll see. I'll see about that. That's nice, Ankush. Good start to the presser, mate. Excellent. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to go on with that then and, and ask what do you know about Ben Bomber because that stoked the fire a little bit. I and mean, We'll come to you in a moment, Ben, but what do you know about him, Ankush? That's the problem. I respect everyone. We don't know much about him, but his last press conference I was sitting, he's like, don't knock me out. I'm like, come on, brother. Let's be a bit respectful. Let's have the fight. I know the moment your fight got offered to me, I said, yeah, I'll fight. I didn't whinge. I was on the stage. I'm still here. I'm going to make weight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to show up. I don't like to talk shit, but if someone's going to say it, I've got to ask him, how many fights have you had? Six fights as an amateur, four as a pro, and still talking shit? Fuck it, man. Oh, hello. That's fantastic, Ankush. Well, I was going to ask you what you know about Ben. Maybe not so much, but you're ready to bring it. Thank you very much. That was Ankush Huda, ladies and gentlemen. Ben, Benjamin Bomber, over to you. Great to see you again, uh, Ben. It's been a unique six-month period for yourself. Uh, you spent some time now overseas. You've uh, picked up some training in the United States over the last three months, and some unique circumstances have presented themselves for you to be on this stage now on Friday night. Uh, what has that brought to your, your game, and how do you expect that training and experience to help you against Ankush? <laughs> Kush. If yeah, you can answer that first before you come into yeah, slag and that'd be great. Um, yeah, first of all, look, I was very fortunate and lucky enough to be able to go overseas. Um, you know, we got work with some of the best guys in the world, some of the best gyms. And, you know, in doing so, we met some, some awesome people such as my coach, Ramon, so I'm very grateful and blessed, you know, to have gone overseas and had that opportunity. You're a humble man, you consider yourself a role model as well and you've got an opportunity now on the big stage, live and free Fox Sports on Friday night. Uh, will you like to jump in then and have a little bit of a back and forth with Ankush or will you keep yourself nice and humble as you are because he said a few choice words to you there Ben. Yeah look I, I don't even know what he's talking about man, like if you ask any of the fighters up here, you know they want to win, they want to win by knockout. I don't know, must have, must have touched on everything because he has a glass chin, maybe that's why, he knows, but I don't know. His last two fights, he got KO'd and almost KO'd the second fight by a midget, so we'll see what happens this one. So will it be a tough fight for you then? He has experience, you know, so it'll be a tough fight Time for you. will tell, you know, time will tell everything, uh, don't yeah. worry about it. Oh, you just had your turn, mate. Um, so what was that? I was just saying, how tough of a, an opponent does he present? He's had a good year so far. How tough yeah, of an well, opponent I, is he? I gave him credit, man. I said he was a good fighter. He was going to be, you know, one of the, my um, my toughest my toughest challenge. Um, that's it, man. Like you said, time will tell. 
Well spoken, ladies and gentlemen. Benjamin Bomber and Kush Huda. Thank you very much, gents. They fight super welterweight six rounds on Friday night. That promises to be a fantastic clash on the undercards. Now let's move on. I'd like to have a quick chat with Clay Waterman, please. If we could pass a microphone down to Clay. Light heavyweight, six rounds for Clay. He's coming up against the very tough and durable Mitchell Whitelaw. Clay, a warm welcome to you, my friend. Uh, it's been a busy six months for you. This will be your fourth fight. You're building up ahead of steam. How are you liking the consistent camps and also what's coming with that preparation and consistency in your boxing game um just being consistent you know keeping keep my head strong um nice and fit man i'm i'm ready for anything that's good mate mitchell whitelaw he's no slouch uh, have you done anything different to prepare for him in the ring nothing different mate just uh you know just stay consistent keep my um keep my skills in order speed explosiveness you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm ready for anything and I'm going to be ready for anything that he comes at me with. And, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of an all-rounder and I like to adapt when I get in there. Fantastic, Clay. What are you expecting and do you have a prediction for the fight on Friday night? Uh, I'm not really about uh, predictions and stuff, but, um, mate, put it this way, it's, it's going to be a good show. I'm looking forward to it. Fantastic. We're looking for that too, ladies and gentlemen. That was Clay Waterman. He's going to be fighting light heavyweight six rounds coming up on Friday night. Now let's move on to the next bout. We have two of our fighters that are with us. They're going to fight light heavyweight division, and that will be over 10 rounds. Regional belt on the line in this contest as well. It is Faris Chevalier coming up against Jerome Pampalone. I'll have a quick chat with Faris first. Bonjour. Comment ça va, my friend? I hope everything is well with you. Alhamdulillah, ça va très bien. Merci, mon ami. Yeah, très bien. Excellent. Good to see Faris. Uh, welcome to Queensland again. Last time out it didn't quite go your way however no shame in the performance. You were fantastic in that fight and it was a close one. Uh, moving into this fight what are you looking to do to bounce back against the very dangerous Jerome Pampalone? Well every fight is the same. I'm just here to fight. It doesn't matter who's in front of me I'm just here to do my job. Last time things didn't go my way that's all right. On to the next one. Jerome is the next one. He's a young, he's a young lion. I heard a lot of good things about him so I'm I'm pretty keen to test myself with him. It is a tough test for you, and credit to you for taking the fight. Straight back into a regional title fight for you, Faris. Is this a must win for you now at this stage of your career? Well, one thing is just like at this level where I am, like every fight are hard. They're all tough, you know, so it's just the same thing. Belt or no belt, I don't really care. I just need to win, that's all. Excellent. And what are his weapons that you've been looking at? What do you need to do to stay away from the power punching of Jerome Pampalone? Look, like again, at this level, everybody punch hard, everybody's fast, everybody's strong. You're just going to have to box and find a way. That's it. Find a way to win. Fantastic. He'll be up against uh, Jerome in that regional fight. That is Faris Chevalier. Merci. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you. Uh, let's move on now to Jerome Pampalone. It's a warm welcome back to Australia. Second time for you, Jerome. And it's been a busy year for you as well. You've been knocking on the door of the world level now. Your record speaks for itself. How important uh, is it that you win this IBF Australasian title on Friday night? Yeah, it's definitely a point of for me to win. Um... It's awesome to be back and I'm on a great card and I know the fight I have ahead of me is a, is a hard challenge but I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll show everyone on Friday night. Excellent, Jerome. Farris will bring a tricky test for you as he's done to a lot of his opponents. What have you done to prepare for his style on Friday night? Uh, I prepare the same for each fight, you know, train hard, make sure my mind's right. But I know, like I said before, I know what I, um, the challenge I have in front of me and I feel this is a great great time in my career to take this fight and um, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Jerome. We wish you all the very best on Friday night, ladies and gentlemen. Jerome Pampalone, who'll be taking on Ferris Chevalier. We'll now move on and have a quick chat with the next bout of the evening. It is Ben Horn coming up against Campbell Somerville. I'll start with you, please, Ben. You've also been pretty busy. Fourth fight in 12 months for you coming up. And it's a good chance to uh, bounce back after a tough time out last time. It was a tough fight and you performed very well. Uh, what are you expecting in this contest against Campbell? Uh, look, it'll be no different, I believe. Uh... Campbell's a great amateur. He's uh, started his pro career very well. Uh, it's going to be the same deal. I mean, I'm versing a top guy here, or DNL wouldn't have signed him, but I'm here to wreck DNL's night, so I'd love to have my hand raised. And uh, sorry, Dean, but that's. Uh, that's how I'm predicting the fight and hope it goes. So. That's the confidence we want to see, Ben. I mean, I that's why you want to bring that fight. Will your experience and those tough bouts that you've had in the past mean a lot for you? Does that give you an edge over Campbell in this contest? 
Oh, look, Campbell's had more fights in total boxing, but pros are different. The game's completely different in the pros, so I'm hoping so that uh, my experience in the pros will be what matters, but uh, we'll see come, what is it, Friday night? So. Friday night, yeah. I know you're enjoying your boxing journey, Ben. In terms of the progression, is this a must-win for you? I just asked that question a moment ago, but is it a must-win for you, or are you just enjoying the ride now? Every fight's a must-win. Fantastic. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was Ben Horn, magnificent. Must win up against Campbell Somerville on Friday night. Campbell, welcome to the big stage. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Nice manners, mate. Thank you so much. Uh, nice start to your career, mate. Two wins from two. Early stoppage in April that came up against Lawrence Glover. How's the camp and preparation been for this bout? Yeah, it's been going well. Thanks, mate. Been training hard since my last fight. Um, I'm glad I've got another fight booked in and can't wait to fight Friday night. Excellent, mate. That amateur career that we've heard a few people talk about so far, does that give you an added experience level now as you move into the pros and come up against a tough opponent in Ben Horn? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I had lots of amateur fights, but this is professional boxing. It's slightly different. Um, but yeah, you know, I've got good experience behind me and looking forward to fighting. Fantastic, mate. One last question for you, please. Ben Horn's a very tough opponent. Uh, are you worried about this level of fight this early in your career, in your professional career and development? No, I'm not. I wouldn't, or I wouldn't have taken the fight. Um, I don't underestimate anyone, and I always prepare, um, you know, as well as I can for every fight. I'm looking forward to Friday night. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. That was Campbell Somerville coming up against Ben Horn. That is another great bout for three-minute rounds. That's coming up on Friday night here at the Nissan Arena. Okay, now let's move back to our main event. It is the top table here behind me. First of all, Isaac Peach. I'd love to have a bit of a discussion with you, continuing on from what we were speaking about earlier. Uh, you've been vocal, I've seen, in the build-up about Justice not producing those highlight reel knockouts, uh, as you've called it so far. Why do you think he needs to break out and be more exciting when he gets in the ring? Um, look, I think I'm not going to go all back into that stuff. Um, I think this is a great fight, and I think Justice has a big stage here that he can prove himself on. And I think Kiki's the guy that's going to um, give him that test, and yeah, that's where we're at. Fantastic. Look, he's confident from what I can tell Kiki. How confident are you heading into this that he can apply the pressure that's required and land the shots to beat Justice Hooney? Well, look, we're only here to win, man. Um, we've got a big task ahead of us. We're not, um, we know that, um, but we're here to win. We've trained, Kiki's never trained this hard. We're doing our best and um, we're confident we can land that shot. Coming forward, will he look to try and press Justice and come forward and put the pressure on, or will he sit back a little bit? What can you tell us about the game plan? I was telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you would, but I had to check. Yeah, no, no. no? Nothing further you'd like to talk about there? No, no, no. Any, last, any last comments about Dean's whinging and, and complaining about that, or we can touch on that later on, or we'll just leave that be? No, no, it's OK. It's OK. Dean can be Dean. Okay, very, very measured there, ladies and gentlemen. Isaac Peach trying to get a, a few peaches out of him. Perhaps we can get a few more out of him a bit later on. Rocky Hooney, I'd like to have a quick chat uh, with Rocky Hooney now. It is Justice's father and trainer. Rocky, spent some time in Los Angeles, Hollywood, Santa Monica, California. The bright lights are last, uh, last six weeks in the build-up to this fight. Has that been a benefit to you guys that you've sort of stayed away from a bit of the spotlight? And I know that, you know, last time out we had a, a bit of a funny time in the lead up to fights with events going on. Has that been a lot better for you just in terms of, you know, relaxing and, and getting away from the spotlight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was to go over there and, uh, you know, just learn uh, new things and, you know, just to complete Justice's uh, boxing. Fantastic, that's great to hear. I know that you, for example, know Justice has the power. We've heard Justin Fortune just talk about that recently, that the power is there and it's being developed. Um, as we talk about that, is this the perfect time now for Justice to put on a statement and, and show that power? Or is it realistically all about winning the boxing fight in whatever means necessary and moving on as cleanly as possible untouched? Look, for, for us, it's, you know, um, getting out there and, um and winning the fight. Um, his power has definitely improved, and that's just, you know, um, sitting more on his punches, and, um, you know, it's just really the technical side, um, you know, coming from the amateurs to the pros. It's, it's a huge transition, uh, especially for a heavyweight. Where does Kiki Lutele's uh, problems for Justice come? What have you analysed in, in his game that will provide concerns for Justice on Friday night? 
He's he's tough. He but he uh, not only does he go forward, he can box. Uh, you know, I have a lot of um, you know faith in justice, but I also have a lot of respect for Kiki. And they both these boxers. They you know they don't talk much, but they do respect each other, and uh, which makes for a really good fight. Well, that's fantastic. We look forward to seeing that take place on Friday night. Thank you very much for that, Rocky Hooney. I'll get you to just pass down to Michael Francis, please. Mick, very warm welcome for you, Justice Hooney's manager. Great to see you again, mate. Uh, how's the plan shaping up in terms of the management of Justice's career and where this fight fits in in that longer-term plan? Yeah, firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Dean for putting on this event. <clears throat> this is a great platform for these younger fighters in front of me here. Uh, the fighter under such a... a, 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 a a card of Justice and um, and Kiki. Look, <clears throat> I've been involved with Justice Hooney since 2017. <clears throat> he's he's done what he said he's going to do. He's he's dedicated to his to his craft. Um, you know, we all know what he's done as an amateur. As an amateur, he's he's broken records. He's he's beat the best. Uh, he's been all around the world. As a pro, we put him uh, up against. Uh, for the Australian title up against um, Django for his very first fight, which, which a lot of people said was crazy. Uh, he's, he won that and won it well. In the last six fights, Justice has progressed. Uh, I think that um, going to America is, is probably taking him to the next level. A lot of people say about Justice's power, Justice is a boxer. Uh, don't worry about his power, but after this camp in, Vegas, in, in, in LA, I think there's going to be going to be something else to take out of these fights. I think Justice is going to develop this power and, uh, and moving forward uh, for the bigger fight. So I think uh, in the future is bright for Justice. Thank you very much for that, Mick. Well spoken. And we look forward to seeing what comes next if Justice gets through this contest. Now let's talk to our main event fighters, please. Toa Kiki Lutelli, a warm welcome to Australia. Great to see you. Thank you. Being very measured in your discussion so far, which is good to hear. You look calm, you look relaxed and ready to go. Uh, what fight do you need to bring to beat Justice Hooney on Friday night? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, God. I'd like to thank Dean and events and um, Justice and his team for having me. But um, what I'm going to bring is um, just a lot of hurt. Um, you know, he, he's coming to knock me out, I'm coming to knock him out, so it's... It's bound to be an exciting fight, so you don't want to miss the show. I heard you talk about that earlier in some of our pre-press briefings about how you're coming to knock this fight over early and not go the distance. Are you capable of knocking Justice Hooney out and getting around his elusive nature? 100%. I believe I can knock him out. Could be the first round or could be the last round, but I'm going to be there. And you've got the gas tank as well. You've trained yourself yeah, 100%. for the gas tank we've to go prepared. We've prepared the best. I've uh, been a lot of sacrifices. Um, leaving my family and stuff like that, so it's, uh, I'm ready, 100% ready. Fantastic. Has that result against Dempsey McKean that Dean Lonergan talked about, has that given you an extra hunger to come over here to Australia and get a statement victory under your belt? To be honest, I'm sick of hearing about Dempsey McKean. It's about me and justice now, and um, what happened with Dempsey, it is what it is. I can't change anything, so stop asking me that question. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Magnificent answer. That's what we want to hear. A couple of grabs there. Thank you very much, Kiki. Appreciate that very much. I'll now ask Justice Hooney to pick up the microphone and we'll have a chat with you, Justice. Uh, back from the United States, your first interview when you came back, you talked about repeating and the repetition of certain drills that you were undertaking over there in Los Angeles to get right for this fight. Has that given you an extra level of confidence now coming up against, excuse me, the very tough Kiki Lutelle? Yeah, it sure has. Um, you know, Doing these uh, exercises and um, adding that extra power to my um, boxing ability is, you know, it's been it's been really good being over there with Justin Fortune in LA because um, you know that's all we did every day, week in week out, and um, yeah, it's coming along nicely, and I can't wait to try it out on Friday night. Are you worried at all personally about these perceptions that come out about your power? Because we hear it a lot that you don't provide those highlight reel knockouts, but accurately, Dean mentioned earlier, you have knocked out four of your six opponents so far. And then I also heard you speak last week about wanting to get out cleanly, untouched, enjoy a really valuable life. Do you listen to any of that at all, or is it just, just all the noise that comes with being a big heavyweight prospect? Yeah, it's just, it's just all noise, man. I, I tend to block it out most of the time. 
uh, I don't pay much attention to it because, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still getting the win. And, um, you know, that's, that's what's going to make me progress into, you know, getting to my goal in the end. We've heard some talk about the, the dismissive nature of, you know, their camp needing to come onto you to actually put the pressure onto you, noting how elusive you are and land more blows. But is it really up to them to come and provide that pressure? Because a lot of people are saying that that's the only way that Kiki can beat you if he comes onto you and applies that pressure. Are you ready for that or worried by that at all if that's what happens? Yeah, look, I've pre prepared for um, whatever game plan they've uh, got planned to bring. Uh, come Friday night, so you know um, if you want to go toe to toe, I'll be there. Um, you know, I've, I'm very confident in in myself and my power and my boxing ability to, you know, get this win. One last question, Justice: Can we ask for a prediction? Will it be that highlight, a highlight real knockout, or is it just going to be a measured performance depending on what happens on the night? Yeah, like always, um, I don't really like giving predictions. Uh, I reckon most of the boys up here don't. Um, but, you know, I've just got, got to go out there and uh, do what i got to do to get the win. And so, you know, it, it'll be a war. You know, I'm, I'm going in to you know, make a statement. Kiki's coming to do the same, so uh, it'll make for a good fight. We look forward to it. It's going to be a massive fight on Friday night. I'd like you to just hand over to Dean Lonigan. I've got one last question for Dean. We know in this business, Dean, and we regularly hear that we don't plan too far ahead as one guy at a time, but let's be honest, you are a promoter and you're a smart promoter who maps things out and plans things. Uh, if he gets through this fight, can we ask what's coming up next for Justice or how that plays no. out in the next 12 months? No. Look, we've got big plans for Justice and we talk, I talk to people all over the world on a regular basis. Ultimately, Rocky uh, is the guy and Justice are the guys who make the decisions on who they fight. We talked about who would you like. We then go around the world and find out. And, you know, f over the next six to eight months, we've got three really high-end opponents lined up, ready to go. It's just a case of you've got to take it. These guys got to take it one fight at a time. Justice has to do the business on, uh, on Friday night, as I'm sure he'll do. But as, as has been clearly identified, Kiki is an extremely tough customer. And uh, we've, we engaged him. And Rocky does not want in his own words, ever, to put justice in with the donkey. And uh, if you have a look at the, 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 the records of the guys that we've fought, or justice has fought, you know, most have only had one or two losses tops against eight to 16 to 17 wins. He's got, you know, the amount of win, wins that the boxers that he's fought have got is just it's ridiculous. It's about 45 to five, I think, Dean, it's, it's, it's very good. It's incredible, and it, this is not a journey that most boxers uh, in the heavyweight division go on. They usually start by fighting guys who have got 20 losses and 10 wins, but uh, Rocky and Justice have never wanted that. They want to be tested, and they just keep saying, we want to get, you know, we want to ramp this up. We want to test ourselves against the best. So. Uh, We've got some big things waiting in the wings, so let's just wait and see what happens. Thank you very much for that, Dean Lonigan. Thank you very much to all of our fighters and all of the promotional teams and managers for joining us today. I'll just politely ask for the fighters to face off in front of our signage there, Huni versus Lutelli. Thanks very much to all of our undercard. Thank you, Dean, and thank you very much to the teams.